the plant maintenance solution has been divided into different folders as you can see here we will talk about the technical structure maintenance PM plans inventory purchasing cycle count depending on the type of solution each plant has they'll have access to some of these folders or all these folders and some of the t-codes within the folders or all the t-codes within the folders within each folder all the necessary t-codes will be present now we will go through each folder separately and explain what each t-code does and how it's configured in each separate video <coughs> first in this video I'll explain to you why you have each different folder and what each folder symbolizes first off in order to have plant maintenance you need to first have a technical structure that the people doing plant maintenance look after so plant maintenance is a top folder and I'll talk about all the things involved in the plant maintenance module now the most important thing in plant maintenance would be the technical structure itself so IH01 is a technical structure if you were to go into this transaction code it will show you the entire technical structure of whatever plant you are dealing with the second item would be if the technical structure is incomplete and you need to add equipments to this technical structure which is the most common thing that the people the plants would be adding to a technical structure then they go into IE01 to create an equipment in the rare occurrence that they want to create a function location which is usually an engineering change or a capital project most likely the project engineer will have access to IL01 IE01 is most likely a project engineer, a planner, and in rare occurrences where they're short on staff, the maintenance supervisor. The next one, IB01, is creating an equipment bomb. Only plants that have the full PM will have access to this. If they have PM light, they will not have access to this. An equipment bomb is a bill of materials, and basically this is a work in progress where the project engineer or a maintenance planner will look at the history of parts use it, parts ordered against a specific piece of equipment and add on to it. Change equipment bomb would be basically once you create the bomb you add on to the equipment bombs that are being created. The, la the, the last two are create material bomb and change material bomb. These two are useful if and a plant has multiple pieces of the same equipment if they have let's say four mixers and all mixers are the exact same across the plant the plant will most likely create one material bomb and assign it to all four equipment bombs and once you make changes to any of the if you want to make changes to the parts ordered amongst the mixers you just make changes to the one material bomb and since the one material bomb is linked to all four equipment bombs it will reflect seamlessly so those are the technical structure T codes most likely like I said it will be a project project engineer looking after this sometimes you'll have the maintenance planners and sometimes you have the maintenance supervisor mechanics should never have access to this and um, this right here is uh, specifically important at the very beginning of a go live because some of the technical structure will be incorrectly labeled so they need to go into technical structure itself and make changes to the naming convention or where things are installed next folder deals with maintenance once you have your technical structure and everything set up perfectly fine a technical structure you go into the maintenance folder the maintenance folder is the most common folder that will be used by uh, the end users of PM. These four T codes are very important and uh, they have to be taught well. Uh, usually the people that are handling this folder here, the technical structure, will be very proficient in computers and even though these occurrences happen rarely, like 
a capital project might happen once a year or once every six months. A new equipment might come every six months, every four months. So they will likely use the reference material to figure out how to do this. As opposed to these T codes, which they use on a daily basis, if anything, they will use it multiple times a day. So they're much more important than these T codes that will be used maybe once every few months. The first T code is create notification. So this is the most important transaction code that we have, IW21. And uh, multiple users will be using this. It will be mechanics, <coughs> planners, supervisors, production supervisors, QA managers, and sanitation managers. We'll be creating this to raise problems around the plant. So anytime there is anything wrong with anything in the technical structure, a person will create a notification to address that, saying there's something wrong in this sector of the plant, please fix it. From this point, <coughs> the next T-code that's most important is IW28. IW28 is specifically used by anybody that has cre that creates notifications to see what has happened to their notifications. So once I create a problem report for let's say a bread oven, I want to see what happened to that. Did somebody fix it? Did they cancel it? Who is working on it? And when did I get it done? And what was the problem they found? So they'll go through IW28 to see a list of all the corrective notifications that they've created and to see what the status of them is. From here, if they are a maintenance supervisor, a maintenance planner, they could take those notifications and create work orders from them to address the issues at hand. They could also close off the notification. So if they don't believe it needs to be done anymore, they could cancel it. Or if the work has already been done, they could close it saying it's been done. So this is the second most important transaction code. The This is a list edit, the IW28, and also the IW38 and also the IW48. Now what this means is that since there are lists, they will have a search variant and then the results will be displayed on a report. So these T codes need to be configured to make sure that the user only has access to the fields they need in order to find what they're looking for. If you overwhelm them by leaving all the fields open, they will get confused and you'll spend a lot of time fixing their problems at a later date. So it's best to simplify things for them early on so you don't have to deal with their issues later on. S so these two T codes are the same. A variant has already been created and it could be uh, used amongst all plants. It's just a matter of working with a user once and making sure that they save the variant under their profile. And if they are to save the variant under their profile with the U underscore whatever their username is, it will save it permanently and they will not have to do that again. It's just a one-time ordeal. Now, we're going to talk about the list of work orders. The way we have split this up, IW38 will now show the preventive work orders because from IW28, you can show the corrective work orders. But IW38, the preventive work orders don't have notifications. Thus, you cannot use this to see preventive notifications. I mean, uh, preventive work orders. So we have separated it in order to make life easier for them. Most people in the maintenance world, when they work on corrective or preventive, they look at it as two different worlds. Even though in a consulting world, a work order is a work order, to the end user who's actually doing this work, it is a completely different task for them. Whenever they do the preventive maintenance, they might have a whole shift that only looks after preventive maintenance. Thus, this shift needs to know what their preventive maintenance is, and then the corrective maintenance might be done by another shift, or maybe there's particular individuals that'll do the corrective maintenance, or maybe depending how large the plan is, they might have the same individual do everything themselves. But, like I said, when the mechanic or the electrician goes to do their preventive or corrective maintenance, they'll be in different mindsets. For example, in corrective maintenance, you order parts, and labor is very unpredictable, and usually it's more extensive. You could spend up to 12 hours working on something. 
Well, in preventive maintenance, it's something that's pretty quick. It's usually a check of some sort, or you're greasing something, or you're just cleaning something. It's something very quick and mindless. Thus, since it's quick and mindless, you don't usually order parts, and usually your labor is minimal. It'd be 0.5 hours or 0.3 hours, or at the most you'll spend is an hour doing PM on something. As opposed to corrective, that could be a very long period of time. The last one I'm going to talk about is IW48, which is time entry. The user will input their time through IW48. This key code needs to be adjusted for the end user. At first it comes raw and it will have data all over the place and fields in a way that the user does not understand what each value means. So those fields need to be hidden and then they need to be uh, rearranged in a way that makes sense to the user, to their everyday way, uh, way of life. So once it's rearranged, you could save it under their profile and it will look like that for the rest of their uh, SAP career. So it's a one-time fix and it does not need to be demonstrated to them. It can be done by uh, a person supporting hypercare. In the time entry, the users will have the option of selecting either a work center, which is who an individual who, who they want to put hours against, or an individual work order. We will filter this T code by uh, do not show me any work orders that have already put hours against them and have been finished or any work orders have been cancelled. So if a work order has been cancelled or it has been f has already had hours against it and been finished then the w user will not see those work orders. They don't have the option of even selecting that. And that was done on purpose so the user does not have to think about oh, oh yes I've already put hours here and it's done. I should not put hours against this again. So we did that for them so they don't have to think about that. The next folder will be PM plans. <clears throat> this is the most important folder when it comes to plant maintenance. Um, it's also one folder that I wouldn't say is the most complicated, but I would say is the it is the trickiest if people do not know what they're doing. It is most of the effects from here are irreversible and uh, it could take a long time to fix. So it is always best that before they start using preventive maintenance, whoever looks after the preventive maintenance for the plant knows what they're doing and is very proficient at it before we leave them alone. So if you ever do hypercare, the two things you got to make sure are well done are the PM plans. You have to make sure someone knows what they're doing in the plant. You can't leave a plant without having one individual that's proficient in PM plans and also maintenance. You have to make sure that the plant in general, whoever is going to be using SAP, understands these four T codes and understands what is going on with them and the workflow behind it. Now, PM plans usually derive about 80% of the work in a plant. So if 80% of the work is being done wrong, that is a very uh, major effect. We will now talk about the different T codes in PM plans. There's five of them. Three will only be used at the very beginning on rare occurrences, which are these three T codes. And then these two will be used on a regular basis, most likely a uh, weekly basis. These four T codes need to be configured for the user. And it's a one-time setup once again. The first T code deals with creating a PM plan. Whoever's going to be made responsible for looking after the PM plans for the plant needs to understand this well. They need to understand all the fields within IP41 and all the things that could go wrong. Because the way PM plans work is that if you do it wrong at this place, which is the beginning, and it carry, it's going to carry through all the way till you get to your preventive maintenance work orders. And then by then, it's a little difficult to figure out what has gone wrong. So it's best to address the problem right here rather than let it linger and get all the way till the end. So ensure that whoever's looking after this knows what they're doing and understands all the fields, understands all the things that could go wrong, understands what each value means in this 
T code. Afterwards, you have a list of PM plans. Once again, this is at the beginning. Before they turn on their preventive maintenance, just like inventory counts, where you have somebody sign off on all the inventory accounts saying, is this the right amount of inventory you have in the plant? And they say yes or no. You have to have somebody sign off on all their PM plans before you turn them on. Whoever looks after them, you, you give them this list, you show them all the PM plans, and you say, is this, are the, is the data in all these PM plans accurate to what you know? And if they say yes, they sign off on it, and then you press start, then that's their own fault that it was incorrect. Um, so this is important to do, make them sign off on this. Now, IP10 is not a, always a necessary T code, but it's on an individual basis. So if you have a one certain maintenance plan that you don't like the timing of it or you want to change when it's done, you go into IP10, you put the number in, and you change the, the, the cycle on it. When I mean cycles, basically, once you turn on a maintenance plan, it will be done, let's say, every day, once a month. I mean, once a month, it will be done on a certain day. So if you pick September 1st as a day, it will be done every first of the month. But now, if you said, oh, that was the wrong date, I really meant to say the 15th of the month, then you got to go into IP10 for that specific plan and restart it and press the new date, which will be September 15th, and then that makes it the 15th of each month. So that's how you use it. This is not a very, you don't, you wouldn't usually use this very often. Usually in the IP17 where you could start all your maintenance plans, once you start them, since you already had the the planner or whoever looks after the PM plan sign off saying that the, all the data and the plans is right, you would start all the plans from here. And one, like I say, once in a while you get a rare instance where the plan will start on the wrong date and they will go, you, go in here and fix it. So these three are usually at the beginning, during cutover, right after cutover. Afterwards, IP24 is something they use on a weekly basis. They'll do, you can use IP24 or IP19. There's two transaction codes. They both have strengths and weaknesses. In this case, we use IP24. And it is PM forecasting. Now, IP19 is a bit more powerful. It shows more data and it does more. IP24 is a little more simple. So depending on the plant, if you got a plant that's really big, it's got a lot of work orders being generated, and the person looking after it needs to micromanage things, then you would give them IP19 so they could see more data because that's what they need. If they just want to know the basics where it shows the date, whether the work order has been created, and whether it's been done, the PM, and uh, who's looking after it, then they could just use the IP24. Whenever possible, use a simpler T code to not make life complicated. But like I said, if needed, get on IP19 because that has more data. Now, the way they'll use this, they'll click on this, and uh, it'll default a date in for them. And then that date will basically show them all the PMs for that period of time. It's usually plus minus seven days. So now if they want to look at their PMs, from two months ago, they have to change the date range. Also, they have the ability to choose from functional locations and equipment. So if they want to look at individual PMs for a piece of equipment. The last one, IP30, is called Create PM Work Orders. Good practice is to make sure to go into IP24 and do their forecasting before they create the PM Work Orders because they know what they're going to get themselves into before they do this. IP30 is irreversible and you can't cancel it once you've done it. So it is good practice to go into IP24, do your forecasting, see what PM is coming, and then know what you're getting yourself into before you go create the PM work orders. That is PM plans. Inventory. Inventory could, is only given to PM full and not PM light. So that's the main difference between uh, PM light and PM full. 